D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So I just finished uh, the penultimate episode of this season of Andor. And I want to just say that there was a ship battle, kind of. Well, no, it wasn't kind of. It was a ship battle, which was very good. And then the rest of the episode was very mediocre, like this show. Um, you know, um, I did, I, you know, I did see some people talking about how, like, the show is really smart and it's a character study and... And, and everybody wants to say the same thing. And I'm saying the same thing as everybody on the opposite side. It's just boring. And it's not Star Wars. I'm sorry. I can't believe people are saying, like, this is Star Wars. Or saying this this is the spirit of Star Wars. No, it's not. Stop that nonsense. Uh, it is not in the spirit of Star Wars. If you like it, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not I'm not dissing you if you like it. That's That's totally fine. I'm just saying, stop saying it's Star Wars because this is not Star Wars. I mean, you take out the the Empire, uh, you know, outfits and you know the the uh, you know X wings and Tie fighters and and Star Destroyers, and it's not Star Wars. I mean, you could it, it, they just threw those things in there so they could call it Star Wars. Um, Star Wars is not a character study; it's a space opera. Uh, you know, is this this it, it barely has aliens and I mean we got some aliens in like a full scene here. Um, but uh th we got the one scene and then other than that, they've been like sprinkled in, like, you know, uh like like somebody had like the remnants of a sprinkle jar and just threw it on the their their cupcake, and it's like they're just like tiny, like a little bit and everything. That's the alien portion of it. And it's not fun, like, at all. There's no fun. I mean, there was kind of some fun with the little piratey guys, the weird aliens. But this show's not good. And it, but that bums me out because I'm not going to lie. I, I thought this would be good because Rogue One is so good. But I think the, the, the thing about Rogue One was that was so, like, it was fast paced and it was a good fast pace. Like you got your information and you moved along this one. It's not, it's, it's paced horribly. I feel like if you would condense this into a more of a three hour movie, I feel like it could be, it could work, but it just doesn't work. I mean, last episode you had the prison break and that was good for the, the 15, 20 minutes. It was, it wasn't even 20 minutes. I don't think. And that was good. This one, the spaceship battle, which was like, I don't know. Five minutes tops. That was good, but the rest of it's boring and not needed. Um, yeah, and that bums me out that I have to say that, you guys. It really does. I I don't I don't like crapping on Star Wars. I really don't because I love Star Wars. I love this. I mean, Disney has really like taken it down a notch. Um, I wish they didn't, you know. Uh, but you know, they let hacks have the movies, and those went away, and then. They now they're letting some people do the uh, make shows like this and Boba Fett and uh, and Obi Wan and uh, I'm sorry I, I don't think that they're fans I think they just wanted to make a sci fi movie but they had access to Star Wars so like sure why not all right I want to get into this breakdown I'll remember some more stuff as we get along I just and there's good actors in here and the acting is good. Uh, I have positive things to say. It's just overall the show is bad. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. That's my opinion. And and again, if you love this show, love it. I'm not, I really, I really, because when the shows that I love, I love that I love them. I'm just like, I'm glad this makes me happy. Um, but this show, um, I, I just, yeah. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with my little whatever that was. My 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 thoughts on it. Um, my my somewhat review. Now let's get down to this breakdown. But before I get started on this breakdown, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm, and small channels like mine, especially mine, are getting pushed to the back of the line. So I please ask that you like, share, and subscribe. And I thank you <laughs> in advance. Sorry, I still got a little bit of a um a cough. I. I got a, I, I don't, I'm not like, 
I don't have COVID and I, I don't have the flu because I just have a, a, a cough. I got it from my son who got it from some little mongrel at school. Ugh, children. Okay, so it starts off where Andor and this dude, who I don't know his name is, they're hanging off on this cliff, right? Because this, this uh, uh, TIE fighter thingy is flying around. It's not a TIE fighter. I can't remember what these are called. Oh, no, I'm not getting a good shot of it. Okay, hold on. We'll just get, we'll just do this. Hold on. There it is. And it's flying around. And he's all like, he's like, they're leaving. And he's like, he's like, I can't feel my fingers. And uh, and he's like, they're leaving. He's like, stop saying that. And he's like, uh, and he's like, he's like, I can't climb up. Uh, he's like, he's like, I can't feel my hands. And he's like, he's like, tell me they're leaving again. Oh, he's like, I heard you. And he's like, tell me they're leaving again. And he's like, they're leaving. And so they climb up. And I was like, yeah, uh, climbing, climb. And then we get this droid B. I don't remember what his thing is. He drops this little mug or whatever. So long story short on this, uh, Aunt Petunia died. Uh, Andor's mom, Mommy Cass, uh, Mommy Andor. She died uh, because, you know, they, they you know, oh, what a waste of an actress. Am I right? <laughs> she just sat in a chair the whole time. It's fine. And so this guy, I don't remember his name is, but he's talking to the droid and he's all like, um, you know, she's dead. And he's like, the sisters of Ferex are going to need your help. And I'm all like, the sisters of Ferex, this is trying to be Game of Thrones. You know, they have the silent sisters that prepare the dead, the dead bodies of people. And this one we have, you know, the sisters of Ferex. So great, Ferex. This junk planet. Um, okay. So they take the body out. Okay. All right. You know what gets me is I only yawn when I start recording. It's so crazy. I'll yawn like four times now. And I, I'm like, why? So this this droid is all bummed out. And this guy who's working for the Empire, oh, he's an Imperial dude. We'll see him later. He's watching. And so is she. Uh, I don't remember her name. Cirilla or something like that. She's watching them. And he's all like, he's like, uh, what happened? She's like, uh, she's like, somebody died. And he's like, you know who it is? And she's like, no, I just started. So we go back to this planet, the prison planet, and these two aliens are doing whatever. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Maybe they're fishing because they mentioned water or whatever. And they're like, we have to get their get to their little puddle jumper. So they start running. And these aliens are like not even paying attention to them. They're like, well, they are, but they're like, just like, yeah, keep running, stupid. And me, I was all like, as soon as I didn't see them running towards me, I'd be like, something's doing because they're not even kind of trying to move. And so this thing blasts out some netting and it's gross. That's like um, the Shelob uh, uh, webbing from Lord of the Rings. I was like, ew, it's gross. Um, but it gets some and it slimes them up and everything. And then then uh, Lieutenant Bitchface, I don't remember her name. She's just, you know, yeah. They're talking about how the mom, mama Andor died. And she's all like, uh, yeah, they like, they want, they want uh permits for the funeral and everything. And she's all like, give them a permit. She's like, this is this is how we're going to get Andor. And um, and she's like, uh, their their ritual takes two days because they they turn you uh when you die, you get turned into a brick. And then they they write your name on it, and then they find a wall to put your brick in. So you're a part of the, the planet. You're part of Ferrix forever. And so then we have some body positivity aliens here. Look at that one. He's gross. Look at that belly. Ugh. Buy a bigger shirt. You're gross. And he's ugly. Like, look at his face. These are not very well put together aliens, but it's like, whatever. It's fine. At least we got some aliens. So they're basically talking about how, they're like, they ruin the water, and they... They ruin our squigglies or some shit like that. And uh, they're like, we're going to kill you. And he's like, no, please don't. And he's like, let's talk. And this one's going to kill him. He's like, they're not going to hurt you or whatever. And so he, they let him out. And they're like, where do you need to go? And he needs to go back to that retirement planet that he was on like four episodes ago that he got arrested on. And so they get onto this puddle jumper and they take off. So then uh, she is working on something here. And along comes uh, Blondie. I don't remember her name. Okay. And so uh it, you if you go through here, you can see a lot of Easter eggs and stuff. So she lets her through. She's like, my sister uh shops here. Hold on, I'm gonna try to see if I can find something. Like right here, this mask. Uh this is what Padme wore when she went back to um Naboo. 
This mask right here is a Jedi guard at the Jedi Temple. And these gloves right here are Freddy Krueger's hands right here. So, and just in case you didn't know. Um, over here in this is a Gungan shield, if I see it. So she's all like, I need to talk to what's-his-face, to Stalin Skarsgård. And she's like, he's not here. Plans are in motion. And she's all like, she's like, I did um, Aldani for him. What have you done? And she's like, I am working. I'm moving plates. And the knives are on the floor and all this and jabber, jabber, jib, jib. Oh, there's there's the Gungan shield home. There's the Gungan shield. That's pretty cool. I don't know what that is. I mean, if it's something, I don't remember what it is. But anyways, so then she's basically like... Um, you know, I need his help or some crap like that. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember what she needs from her, but I'm like, you know, honey, you know, you are being, you know, everybody's getting sloppy. It's like, get focus on the task. Um, He's like, tell him I stopped by. I'm like, okay. Oh, she tells him about Cassian and how she's, uh, the mom died. That's what she tells her. I remember now. So he's still watching, which I don't understand how people do, like how what's her face doesn't notice that he's just watching. She's watching. Everybody's watching. He's all like uh, the best friend showed up and he's like, tell me if who comes in, who leaves, all that stuff. This guy's drumming on those drums again. Drummy, drummy drums, which is kind of cool. I mean, like that part, <laughs> it's kind of cool because you get to see like what a tradition that they have. But. And you get to know, but I mean, like, come on. So. <laughs> that doesn't make the show oh, good. So this guy's he's looking around and he sees Cassian's bed, or maybe that's Mama Andor's bed and Petunia. And he's all like, B, come on, dude, you come back to my place. And he's like, I'm charging. And he's like, You've been charging all I'm ch 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 charging. I hate, I hate his stutter. It's so stupid. Why would a droid have a stutter? <sighs> it's so stupid. And he's all like, uh, he's like, She's like, uh, he's, I can't remember what he says, like something like they're not coming back or whatever. And he's all like, come back to my house. And he's like, you could stay. And he's like, just one night. And he's like, yay. Um, and me, I'm all like, that's so weird. I would not sleep in a dead person's house for a droid or, uh, you know, in this case, like a dog. So here's Bix. I think that's her name, Bix. She's very pretty. So they come in, they're like, come with us. We need to talk to you. And they're like, I need you to look. I need you to tell me the truth about something. And if you don't tell me, I'll know. And then I'll have to call that doctor back that will play the whale noises or, you know, like, uh, you know, you know how on Dumb and Dumber, he's like, you want to hear the most annoying noise in the world? It's probably that noise. It's probably that noise. Or, you know, it's just like, you know, a, a total yenta, just yentering it up. Uh, that can get annoying, too. So this right here, guys, is Anto Krieger. We finally get to see what this beautiful man looks like. And he's the one that's going to die because he is going to run into the, the, the Empire's trap. So he's like, is this the man that you introduced to Cassian Andor? And so she looks at him and then she starts to cry. And then we didn't get an answer. Which I'm all like, uh, it would have been nice to get an answer. So then we go back to uh, Mon Mothma's house. Uh, again, at this point, I don't know about you, but I am ready for a nap. Okay, and we're not even halfway through, guys. So Mon Mothma's daughter is with her friends, and they are learning the old Chandra La way of, you know, becoming wives <laughs> or some crap like that. And uh, she's all like, you've got her into this. And she's like, no, she's like, uh, you know, uh, she's really into it herself and her and her friends. And she's the one that searched it out. And she's like, have you gotten any, any suitors? And I'm just assuming this is like a way for them to like prepare themselves for wifehood, which is, which is always good. You know, being married is awesome. Uh, I know it's, I know it's not uh, fashionable to say that, but, uh, I love being married. I love having a family. I don't know about you guys, but if you don't have a family and you're not married and everything, then try it out. You'll like, I think you'll like it. I like it. It's, it's nice. You know, uh, uh, yeah, you get to hang out with your best friend all day. Well, not all day because, you know, we both work, but you know what I mean? Anyways. So, uh, and my kids are cool. Uh, we play, although this past weekend we like play fought like all weekend. Sorry, side note, I'm getting off into my personal life with this, but my, my kids, they wanted to play fight cause they watched power Rangers, which I love because I loved power Rangers when I was younger, but they wanted to, to play fight, but play fight my ass. I had my son like in a, a headlock, but it wasn't a headlock. Cause 
obviously he like you know was just like I, I I did the thing um from uh Big Daddy where he, he the guy he like puts him in the headlock like this and he's like go to sleep go to sleep and then he go the, he goes to sleep or whatever but I did that and I was like go to sleep and he's like I don't want to go to sleep I'm not tired and I was like I was like you're funny kid and then my daughter just comes up and like punches the shit out of me and I was like ah. I was like I thought we were playing I was like you guys are getting real real quick. So, uh, yeah. And then I, you know, I taught him how to like 300 kick somebody. Uh, yeah. Cause you know, streets are tough anyways. Okay. Back to this. So she's all like, basically like, I'm not quite sure what they're doing here, but they're obviously <laughs> doing some Chandra law tradition and preparing themselves for motherhood. So then she starts telling her about the money and how she was taking it out of their family trust. And she was taking a hundred thousand credits out here and there and yada, yada, yada. And at the beginning, it was so easy, and now she can't do it. So now there's 400,000 credits missing. And she's all like, I found a way, kind of. Um, and she's like, well, you know, what's the price? Uh, and uh, that's when the daughter comes in. And she's like, Auntie, Auntie Blondie. <laughs> and uh, and she realizes that her pri the price is her daughter, you know, her daughter's, her daughter's innocence. So then uh, we move over to uh, Cereal. Uh, I'm hungry. And he's all like, not just because I want some cereal, because he's hungry, a, a hunky, blue-eyed man. So beautiful. Anyway, so he's talking to this guy. Remember, this guy was in the blue outfit that went with them to Ferrix, and they they messed it up and got people killed and stuff. Um, He's all like, hey, I heard about casting Andor. His mom died and I was like cell phone service. Am I right? You know, sometimes it just, you know, bails on you, especially remember the when the cell phone was first introduced and you had like flip phones and stuff. And you're like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can't. I can hear you. <laughs> remember those days? Yeah, I know. Right. And then his mom's sure. And then he doesn't get the whole message kind of thing. But his mom's like, I'm glad to see that this is all over with. And. And you can go on with your life and everything. And he, I'm just like, oh, you're such a, you're not a very supportive mother, honey. I mean, granted, he is, he's following a, a you know, um, a crazy, crazy nonsense, but whatever. He's a crazy dude. So then back on the retirement home planet, which I, those aliens just brought him back here with like, they're just like, sure, why not? Let's take you back here. I don't know you. And so they get here. He sneaks into this hotel room where this alien is like, you know, getting his, you know, tentacles on. And he gets his little box and all of his stuff, his credits. Look at all those credits right there. Excuse me. And then um, he sneaks out and then he's he's. Uh, oh, oh, OK. And then he the um, Stalin Skarsgård lands on the planet that uh, Saul Guerrera is on. And he, you know, he goes in, he's not, he's like, uh, he, I liked this line because he's like, either give it, put it down or give it back. <laughs> and I'm like, that's funny. So he goes in and he's like, he's all in a mood. And he's like, tell, tell uh, Krieger that we'll, we'll be there. We'll, we'll give him his backup and everything. He's like, you're not going, basically. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, Krieger's going to die. And he's like, I have inside information that it's a trap. It's a trap. And that uh, Krieger is going to die. 30 of his men and Krieger. They're all gone. Bye bye. And he's like, you would sacrifice them. He's like, for the cause and for my contact. Yes, because it, you know, I would give up 30 men for a contact that took so long to curate. And it's a good contact and it helps us out, of course. And he's all like, why are he's like, he's like, why are you telling me this? And he's like, he's like, uh, how do you know I won't tell me? He's like, I don't. Uh, that's, you know, it's up to you. He's like, I'm giving you the choice. Do you want to, to save him and let them know that we have a spy amongst them? Or do you want to let him sacrifice him and his people to get this rebellion going? And he's like, call it whatever you want. And he's like, I call it war. He's like, how he's like, you've got, you've got somebody here in my, my ranks and everything. He's like, yeah, it's tubes. And tubes is all like, what? And, he, and that's when he pulls the gun. He's all like, He's like, what are you doing? He's all like, <laughs> oh, apologies. <clears throat> he's like, you'll never make it out here alive. And he's like, this is just to get your attention. He's like, you need to focus, dude, because this is get this is real. And he's all like, if Krieger does not 
get taken down, we are at jeopardy, our, our whole organization, and we need this to succeed. So he's all like, uh, how do you know I won't tell him? He's like, I don't. But And that's what he tells them, like, think about this. Do you want to get rid? Do you want to sacrifice a contact on the inside? Or do you want to sacrifice Krieger? Uh, because the contact inside has been giving us good info and good intel. Uh, and it's helpful. So the mommy uh, Yenta leaves. Mommy cereal. And he goes into her safe and steals her money. Shame on you. I understand you don't like your mom and stuff, but you don't get to just, you don't just, you don't take from your mother. What is that? That's nonsense. Bad son. I mean, she probably wasn't like the best mom ever, but you know, I mean, come on. She was trying. She was a, she is a total yenta though. Oh, so, so here they are talking in speed in, uh, you know, you know, seller lingo. Uh, uh, but they're basically talking about like the Saul Guerrero thing and Krieger. And then they're also talking about Cassie and Andor. And she's saying like, let it go. And he's like, no, we need him. And then they get broken up and it's a star destroyer, but with a, some, some, uh, some uh, satellite dishes on there. I bet they get really good TV shows there. Um, and they're basically like, you know, Hey, uh, we, we're, and this is the part that was good. This whole part right here. They're like, hey, trash out your engines. Give us your, oh, your call sign and everything. And he gives them a fake call sign. And everything's going fine. But they're like, but then they're, but he starts charging up stuff. And they're like, hey, we're still going to board you. Um, And so then he, he sets up all this stuff. And then hold on. And then I do want to show you this. And they got the tractor beam and they turn it up to two and everything. And then he tries to get out of there. But then he sets up his little thing. And these things pop out. I'm going to play this real quick. These things pop out and they shoot these things right here. And they're like, what is that? And I was like, that's cool. That's a good idea, too, because it's not a blaster. It's just projectiles. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Right. So that takes out this dish. So now he's done with the tractor beam. And so he's like, where's my ass support? And so these TIE fighters come out. So then he starts coming around. He shoots, he shoots the, the TIE bomber. Boom, 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 TIE bomber gone. And then he comes back around and he does a flyby. And then he puts this projector thing out and it creates like a lightsaber in space. I was like, what? This actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> I don't know. This isn't like the Holdo maneuver, but it's it's kind of cool. I just don't know if this is like a lightsaber or what whatever it is, but uh, but it was cool. And then he does a little flippy flip and destroys both of these guys. And then he and then he uh uh goes into hyperspace. And then this guy's all like, ah shit, I fucked up, fucked up. And so this guy gets a communication from Cassie and Andor. And Cassie's like, hey, uh, tell my mom I love her. She would be proud of me. I'll be back when I can. And he's like, Cassie. And he's like, don't use names. He's like, Cassie, and I'm sorry, but your mother died. And I was like, you idiot. You don't tell him that because now he's going to come back. Ugh. To Ferrex. Gross. Um, so he's upset and I get it. I get it. So then he goes back to talk to his little friend and he's all like, he's like, how many do you think made it? And he's like, I don't know. Not enough. And I'm all like, yeah, only two made it. You two. You two are the only two that made it off that planet. You want to know why? Because you two found aliens that were on a fishing trip. And that's why you got off. Everybody else either is back on is still on that prison. They've either drowned or they got caught on the little rocky area <laughs> or they, you know, died on that rocky desert thingy area. Nobody else found aliens like you guys did on a fishing trip. They didn't find, you know, uh, <laughs> the the alien broke back mountain of Star Wars. They didn't find that. OK, you guys. So then um, so then he's all like, you've got to tell people he's like, we need to split up and tell people people got to know what was going down there. And he's all like, yeah. And then they hug because they're like, we made it through something together. And then uh, and then he's like, ah, uh, he's like, I got to go back to Ferrex now because my mom died and I got to see her her brick. And that's where it ends. You guys, this episode ends. And I just want to say for a penultimate episode, it was uh, lacking, in my opinion, 
Um, in terms of an episode, it was uh, lacking. Um, and then in terms of like everything else, like the, that that spaceship battle was cool. The acting is good. The acting is good. Everybody's doing a good job acting wise. It's just, it's just so boring. It's so boring. And it's such a slog to get through. I'm telling you, I know you guys, for those of you who love the show, I know you're all like, you're impatient. You're childish. This is adult Star Wars. You just don't like good storytelling and character development. All this stuff. And I here's the thing. I get what you are saying. Well, I mean, calling me childish, that's just petty. You, you get over get over yourself with that. Saying that I'm impatient, I mean, you're right. I am impatient. But saying that I don't like uh, adult Star Wars is ridiculous because this is this is not this is not Star Wars. It's not the spirit of Star Wars. It's not Star Wars. There's no fun. There's no aliens. There's no nothing. This is just a sci-fi TV show and they just use all the Star Wars stuff to to sell you at, as Star Wars. If this was not Star Wars, I I'm curious if people would still be watching. Um, yeah, but I am curious to see how they're gonna, how they're gonna top this sucker off because for a season one, I don't think they're gonna pull off anything special, but we'll see. We'll really see. I, I have a feeling they're just, I have a feeling that they're gonna do something like have a big character cameo. I've, I've heard rumors that Darth Vader is gonna show up for the season finale. I don't know if that's true. I just was reading on like, reddit and stuff like that so who knows if and on twitter and who knows if all those people are correct um but i'm just saying like i do i think they will have a big character cameo for the last episode of this season um and then i i i but i don't think it'll be enough to to really be all like oh my god that was such a great season and such a great episode um but we'll see so that is my breakdown and my review, my thoughts on episode 11 of End of Season 1. Um, but yeah, tell me what you guys thought about this. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Um, you know, is Andor a fun, a, a, an interesting character to you? I don't understand how he could be. I mean, we practically learned nothing about him. Um, but yeah, all right, tell me what you guys thought about this. Uh, go ahead and leave all of your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit the like button. You know, I won't mind if you're new to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, and or breakdown and review. You guys have a good week. Bye.